So I've got the shower pan in and the linear drain. It's all set and finished. It's siliconed in and the shower pan itself is set into a bed of uh, closed cell foam. And I've started running the actual PVC trim for the interior of the shower. First, I put on a layer of peel and stick, a waterproof membrane that'll also heal around the nails. It'll seal around the nails as I shoot nails through the tongue on all of this PVC so I won't get any leaks. And I took that PVC flashing and I lapped it right over the top. You can see where I've lapped it over the top edge of this lip that I installed. And it doesn't really matter how far the, the membrane laps over that lip because I'm going to cover that with the first piece of PVC and whatever doesn't cover it, I'll trim off with a sharp knife when I'm all done. And the PVC that goes on, the first piece that goes on, I've rabbited it. So when I set it on top of this lip, it'll cover probably about 03 eighths of the top of that lip. And it'll, that means it'll also cover this little bit of overlap on the membrane. I started on the bottom on this side over here and then I worked my way across the back and now I'm going to start on the bottom on this side. Now remember you can't put a level in here. You can't put a level on this and start installing it to the level because the bed of the truck isn't level. So what I've been using is an old fashioned square. So I just take the square, I put it up against the wall and I set that down right onto the PVC to make sure I'm in a nice square line to the wall. Because if you remember, when I set these walls, I used a big square to set the walls. So I know that they're square to the floor of the van. And now everything will be square and in a sense level off the floor of the van. So this piece comes in and butts right into this one. All I have to do is align the V grooves so that they're flush and I'll pop a nail right through the top of the tongue. And then, to make sure the that this piece is properly aligned with the floor, I'll take my square and set it in here right on the edge of this wall and lift this up until the reveal between the square and the PVC is even, right there. And then I'll pop another nail right through the top of the tongue. And any of this flashing that's exposed underneath here, and just a tiny bit of it is hanging down below the PVC, I'll just trim that off with a knife. And pull that out of there. It's pretty tight in here to get the camera and me in here, but you can see how easy this is gonna be. You just take each piece, the tongue is up, so the groove is down. That way if water cuts behind it, it's not going to land inside the groove. Snap that in until it's nice and snug. Give it a tap and then shoot it right through the top of the tongue. So I'm leaving all of these pieces long and I'm going to take a router when I'm all done and I'll put a flesh cutting bit on it and follow this edge which I cut from a template if you remember so it's perfect and that way I'll get exactly a flesh cut on all the PVC so when I put the wing A trim on when I'm all done and I trim this out with hardwood the hardwood will flush tight against that PVC and against that pre-finished plywood too. The problem you're going to run into when you have a cove ceiling like this, this corner back here where the ceiling meets the wall is a big radius cove in it, you're going to find out that you've got to scribe these pieces to fit into the cove and 
We're going to have to remill some of this stuff too. You can see that I already did it to this piece. Look real close and you'll notice that the reveal on this bottom little part of the panel is much narrower than the reveal up here. That's because I've ripped the bottom of this piece off. I ripped this off down here. I cut a new chamfer and I cut a new groove in the bottom so it would still slide right into that tongue. I'm going to show you how I did that with this piece, but first let's scribe this thing. I'm going to just take my scribes and I'm going to spread them out to the farthest gap, which is right about there. Then I'm going to start at the top and hold my scribes level and perpendicular to this wall so that they're horizontal and then just run them right down this corner. Here's that same scribe line I just marked. I'm going to hold my scribes so that they're level, horizontal, and then keep them horizontal, sliding the pointed end flat against the cove on the wall and tracing a line right across the face of this piece. And now this piece will fit in here nice and tight once I cut it. Okay, I've cut this piece. I'm going to put it on top of the tongue and slide it in there. And there it is. And now you can see that this bead doesn't line up with this one, and this bead is way up higher than this one. So I'm going to cut the bottom of this board here and put a new chamfer on it and drop this whole thing from about here to here, which is about three-eighths of an inch. Now that I've ripped this piece, I'll take a router with a chamfer bit in it, and I'll put a little bit of a bevel right on this edge. I've got this little groove in here from my chamfer bit. It's got a burr on it, so I'm going to sand this out with some 120 grit paper and get it nice and smooth. And now I'll cut the groove for the tongue. And for that, I'm going to use a slot cutter in another router. And that's why I have a lot of routers. All right, let's see how this fits. I'm going to put it down onto the groove. So it's a nice tight scribe, but if you look close, this chamfer here is a little bit lower than that one, and this one's right on. So I'm going to split the difference. I'm just going to pick this up a little bit and space it off of this piece. So it's not quite tight in the tongue and groove, but this joint lines up now. And this one's just a hair high. So you're not going to be able to, your eye's not going to really catch that these don't line up perfectly. This is a router with a flush cutting bit. It's kind of a cool router. It's a Festool MFK and it has an extended base, but you can put an extended base on any router, but it's going to help me hold this thing flat against the PVC as I run the router bit and the bearing, this bearing right here, rides on my half inch Baltic birch wall. Yeah, it's a dirty job, but somebody's got to do it. May as well be me. Let me show you how this bit rides on this wood back here too.